In this tutorial we are going to learn some basic features of a quadruped robot. Generally, quadruped robots are more robust on complex terrains than vehicles with wheels. But since this tutorial is an introduction, we will assume that the robot is on the horizontal flat plane. This robot model is based on the famous robot which probably most of you know, but dimensions are not exactly the same. To operate this robot, a joypad is needed, but if you don't have one, use the controller app which is also included in the zip file provided with this tutorial. In legged robots, understanding of gait is very important. Gait is, quite simply, the pattern of how a person or animal walks. There are several types of gaits. Firstly, let's look at crawling. The term crawling is often used for movements of reptiles like lizards and turtles, while walk is used for mammals like horses or dogs. In this tutorial, we will define crawling as a movement when the animal is moving each leg high up in the air one by one. This gait is used when animals are moving over broken ground. Note that while animal swings one leg, other legs are slowly moving backwards relative to the body, allowing the animal to move forward. Trotting is also sometimes called amble gait. Two diagonal legs swing forward while the other two support the body and move backwards. This gait is quicker than crawling, because two of its legs are lifted at one time, although it's not very energy efficient. The stability of the body is related to the frequency of the legs being lifted and placed, the quicker, the less shaky it is. Also, stability is related to design of the feet as well. If the feet have a large area contacting with the ground, you will find it stand better while the other two legs are lifted. The gallop is the fastest gait. Each stride can cover more ground than in other gaits, but it's also very energy demanding. In the gallop, we also see the greatest compressing and stretching of the trunk, with the tightest compression happening as the front limbs lift and the longest extension right before the front limbs land. In this tutorial, for a quadruped robot we will cover crawling and trotting. Now let's take a closer look at crawl gait. Crawling is a static stable gait. Inertial forces are negligible, and balance of forces is maintained with each step. This means that the robot can stop at any time without falling. While crawling, the robot always has three points of contact with the ground. Also, the sum of moments around the line connecting two diagonal contact points with the ground should be more than zero. In other words, the center of mass should always be inside the triangle of ground contact points. Otherwise, as soon as the robot raises its leg, the robot will fall. Let's take a look at the gait sequence. When the robot raises legs on the left side, it leans a little bit on the right side to move its center of mass, and vice versa. Note that the amount of how much the robot leans aside can be changed in the gait controller by body shift Y parameter. Now let's talk about trotting. As it was mentioned before, trotting is unstable since legs contact with the ground only at two points at the same time. So, some kind of stabilization control should be applied to stabilize the robot. The objective of control is to find the position of the legs which will make robot roll and pitch angles even to zero. In this tutorial, PID control is used to stabilize the robot. This is how compensation is calculated. R stands for the objective values of pitch and roll, that is zero. E is the difference of the objective values in data obtained from the IMU. Since this is a discrete system, to calculate differential part we divide the difference of the current and previous error values by current time step value. And to calculate the integration part, we add a product of current time step and current error value to the previous integration value. Then, rotation matrix about each axis is calculated. Finally, Corrected leg position is calculated using rotation matrix and leg positions calculated from trot sequence. This is trotting forward sequence. While two diagonal legs swing forward, the other two legs kick the ground. For side movement, the idea is the same. 
Note that diagonal legs always swing to the robot moving direction and kick to the opposite direction. For the pivot turn, we have a different situation. Here, two diagonal legs move in directions opposite to each other to create a momentum which rotates the robot. Overall, the higher frequency of the legs being lifted and placed, the less shaky robot movements become. But if the legs movement speed exceeds the actuator limit it will result in divergence of the control. In this part we will talk about how to find joint angles of the leg. Usually this is done by inverse kinematics calculation. For inverse kinematics please check this tutorial. But in this tutorial, as an alternative solution, we will find joint angles trigonometrically. This is a leg. The coordinate origin is the rotation center of the joint which connects body and the thigh. Each part of the leg is simplified as a link. The origin is O and this is also rotation center of the first link. We have two more rotation joints at points A and B. Point C is the contact point of the leg and ground. Each link length is set as L1, L2 and L3 respectively. Also, we set point G which is on the XY plane and has the same XY coordinates with the point C. OG is the distance between the origin and leg contact point in the XY plane. OG can be found with the next formula. OA and AG are vertical to each other. So, OG also can be explained as this formula. Using formula 1 and 2, the following equation is derived. AG is expressed as shown. For the later calculations we also have to find length of AC. Since AG and GC are vertical to each other, AC is expressed like this. Now let's find out theta 1. As shown on this figure, theta 1 can be found subtracting red and blue angles from pi. So, theta 1 can be expressed like this. Note, that this formula may differ depending on how you set your coordinate system, but the idea remains the same. Now we are going to find out theta 3. Theta 3 can be found out by subtracting angle alpha from pi. Using the law of cosines, we obtain the next formula. Transforming this equation in respect to alpha. Alpha is expressed like this. So, theta 3 can be obtained by subtracting alpha from pi. Theta 2 can be found out by subtracting the red angle from the blue angle like it is shown in this figure. Note that all these angles are on the same plane. Here is the rough program flow. In initialization state, robot dimensions and controller initializations are done. Here we also subscribe to Joypad and IMU topics and set publishers for each leg joint. This robot has three operation modes. Crawl, Trot and Stand. Depending on in which operation mode the robot is, an appropriate controller is selected. A controller sets the sequence of leg movement. Robot state can be changed using joypad. After calculating leg positions, calculation of each joint is done. At the end of the loop, each joint angle is published. Here is the leg moving sequence. 0 is for leg swing and 1 is for leg movement on the ground. As described in this flow chart, this robot has a separate controller for leg swing and leg movement on the ground. It based on the current time step and joypad input. To launch this simulation, first, download the zip file from Google Drive using the link in the description below. Extract the file. Open a terminal and create a workspace. Move UI folder to your workspace and other packages to the source folder. Open terminal and build your project.
Open a new terminal and source the directory. Launch the file. To run Joypad emulator app, execute controller pi file. Note, to change walking mode, you have to set stand mode once and after that select a new walking mode. 